Good morning, everybody. This is Paul Carruthers. I'm the communications manager for Moto America, and this is Moto America's weekly podcast, Off Track with Carruthers and Vice. As I already mentioned, I'm Carruthers. I've got Vice joining me from Ohio on the line. And uh, how are you this morning, Sean, other than a little bit late? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good morning. I don't know. I guess I thought Friday was the, uh, the weekend for some reason, so I kind of lost lost uh, my mind there for a minute, but I'm back and better than ever. So every, life is good. Well, just to let everybody know, we record these at various times during the week, usually Thursday. We had a technical issue yesterday with our guests, so we moved it to Friday, uh, 7 a.m. in California. And uh, the guest and I are both in California, both managed to, uh, to be on time for a seven o'clock call. Our partner in, in Ohio, who's, you know, I think it's what, <clears throat> excuse me, 10 in the morning, yeah, 10.05. Yeah, 10.05 and, <clears throat> excuse me, damn, I got a frog in my throat. So uh, our guest, our, our, our co-host in Ohio, 10.05, finally managed to, uh, to be coerced into joining us after I had to remind him once. Uh, so, Sean, I, you know, you, you got to quit with this slacking crap. You know, it's funny. It goes all the way back to my college years. When I was in college, I made sure that I scheduled all my classes for either afternoon or uh, early evening. I never, ha I never had to get up in college either. So yeah, I'd, I'd sleep forever. It's one of my favorite sports actually. So that's so. the exact opposite of me because I was, you know, I'm, I'm pretty much a morning person and I always have been. Uh, so when I was in college, I, I got all my classes as early as I could and got them over with. Well, that's dreadful. I couldn't handle that. <laughs> no, nah, the mornings when I'm at my best. So anyhow, <laughs> Let's talk about a little bit about our guest today. Our guest is Hunter Dunham. He raced uh, in Stock 1000 Championship last year for Moto America. Uh, finished 10th in the championship. Had some injuries, uh, I think, mid-season towards the end. It kind of it kind of wrecked his year a little bit. But he still, as I said, mentioned to finish 10th in the championship. He's ridden with us in Junior Cup, um, Stock 1000, as I mentioned, and He's going to be back next year with, uh, with Stock 1000 again, and we're going to talk to him about his program for this coming season and also the, the season's past. So welcome to the show, Hunter. I know you're in somewhere in Southern California. Tell us about where you are and what you're up to today. Yeah, hey, guys. Uh, good morning to you. Good afternoon to Sean. You know, he likes to get up quite late. Uh, <laughs> so he's not a morning bird like me and you, Paul. Uh, so, yeah, no, I'm um, – I'm actually in Southern California, uh, Marietta area. Um, I'm actually driving at the moment, just about to pull up to Blackmore's Ranch um, to do a couple of super camps, a couple of days of super camp with uh, uh, Danny Walker and American Super Camp. Um, so um, it's going to be a fun, fun couple of days um, just out here in the beautiful sunshine, not back freezing cold back home. So I'm looking forward to just standing out in this warm sun instead of freezing back home in Georgia. So are you sort of in a guest instructor role there or how does that work? Yeah, so yeah, Danny, um, yeah, me, a uh, couple of us. So me and Cam Peterson uh, mostly kind of helped Danny uh, and Jake Gagne um, with um, super camps, just kind of guest instructors, um, just get a ride in motorcycles for a couple of days and coach a couple of people and try to make a buck at it. So it's, it's a fun role. Uh, we do it all over the country, so it just happens to be in Southern California um, this weekend. Last weekend, me, Aribe, Jason Aribe, um, and uh, Cam were up in Northern California doing a camp. So oh, we do doing... It sort of works out pretty well for you because obviously you instruct, but it also gives you a lot of seat time and you get to slide around and have some fun. Right, exactly, yeah. So it's the best – the best thing is, like you said, um, is to just ride motorcycles. And that's what the goal is all the time is try to ride as much, much as possible. So when I get to just kind of make a dollar at it and help out and coach some people and still have some fun at the same time. And with Danny, it's literally, literally is a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he helps us out. It's, it's, it might be $2 sometimes, but yeah, for sure. <laughs> 
you know, Hunter, one of the things I want to get into with you is a little bit regarding your, your stature. I mean, you're known to be a, a tall rider, lanky rider. So let, let's talk about that from the perspective of super camp and riding on those TTRs um, or even riding with the J-Force training camp like you've been doing with Josh Hayes for a while now. Um, how, how does it feel to ride on those bikes? Is, are they okay for you at, with being as tall you, as you are? Yeah, not – granted, I would love to be a small – five two five five guy they'd fit me a lot better but there's no complaints here um i've been tall pretty much a long time so I, you know, I don't use it i don't use it as an excuse i just figure out ways and my i might have to sit differently on the bike than those guys um and just work a little bit harder so it's not a i don't use it as a crutch um but i know some people might think but I, I have my advantages. I can actually kind of muscle the bike around a little bit more. Um, yeah. But, you know, it just it's a give and take most of the time. So, um, but I don't ever look at it. I just try to figure out how to get around it and move, keep moving forward. Well, you know, it's funny. Years ago, um, I have always said, we used to always talk about Dale Quarterly when he raced it being a really big guy. And it's funny, you see him in the paddock and he, he's kind of an average size person at this point and you know it's changed a lot I mean between you and Jake Lewis and uh um you know there's three or four of you guys uh Nolan Lampkin I mean there's a lot of really tall younger riders and I wanted to talk to you about that a little bit because when you joined our series in Junior Cup one of the things I remember fairly early on is how you had a stepped seat on your bike and that's something Colin Edwards did way back in the 90s when he rode a TZ250 and you know Colin's a tall lanky rider too so he used to use that to get his kind his butt up a little bit high and off the seat um and I, I know that's what you were doing with with your bike and did that talk to us about riding in junior cup and then you had a very brief stint it was essentially one round at pittsburgh on a super sport bike and then you know you had gotten injured at that that um that race and that round and then you came back the next year and are in stock 1000 did you did you go from being on that junior cup bike to the stock 1000 bike because of your size and the fact that it probably fit you better than, than that, that super sport R6 that you rode for that one race? Um, yeah, for sure. So yeah, in junior cup, like you said, we did make a custom tail section. Um, the rules allowed it to basically we made it to where I could slide back onto the back of the tail down the straightaways and get my elbows tucked in, um, and be an arrow as po be, think small as possible, even though I'm six one. Um, uh, we just had to make it work, but yeah, uh, inevitably we kind of made that decision, um, uh, for, um, junior cup to stock 1000. It's not like I haven't ridden 600s before I do it. Uh, I did a lot, um, amateur, like we stuff, um, on 600s. And so like, I was used to like the bigger bikes. It's not like I jumped from a junior cup bike straight to a stock 1000. Um, I've rode some in between, but yeah, inevitably we thought it was the best jump for me. Um, Money wise as well, uh, the our stock 1000 program was going to be um, a little bit cheaper for um, my family and I and the team um, rather than a super sport uh, 600 ride. Um, just because it's a stock bike, you don't have to do too much to it. Um, but yes, for sure, the height I actually fit on a, a bigger bike better, and I'm actually pretty comfortable on one now. Um, so yeah, that was, that was one of the points, but also, um, there was a couple others. Um, main goal is basically to get a super bike ride. So might as well just start racing 1000s and kind of figure out how to ride them. Cause you, um, they're a, a little bit different than a 600 and especially different than a junior cup bike. So the more time I can spend on one, the better chance I have to get a super bike ride in the future. Hunter, tell, let's talk a little bit about last season. Um, refresh our memory and kind of, you don't have to take us through race by race, but like when, where was it that you got hurt and how many races did you miss, et cetera? Just kind of fill us in a little bit on, on what happened in 2020. I don't know if I really want to refresh on it because it didn't go so well. But. <laughs> yeah, but you know, sometimes you got to talk about the bad stuff to make the good stuff seem even better. Exactly. Right. I, I, I say that in the mirror every morning. Okay. <laughs> um, so no, I, um, so yeah, I got hurt, um, at the Ridge. Um, that was the first time I had, I just had a good season going, figuring the bike out, stuff like that. Um, 
just kind of first get my feet wet first season for stock 1000. Um, and then I just had a kind of a get off at the Ridge. Um, that was just a stupid mistake on my part. Um, and hurt myself and actually knocked myself out. Um, I lacerated a kidney and my liver um, all in one crash. So it was kind of a three three for one. It was a pretty big crash. Um, but after that, I luckily I'm still young, so I healed pretty quickly. Um, so I missed uh, Jersey round um, and then came back um, at Barber and – Felt pretty good on the bike, trying to get back into it. And on, um, I decided to do the Superbike races on Saturday, Sunday, the Superbike Cup races. So I did the stock race. And on Saturday in the Superbike race, I um, was running, uh, battling for night uh, with a couple people and just came out of a corner and grabbed too much throttle, got a little too excited and kind of high-sided myself um, and landed weird and broke my arm. So basically two back-to-back -back races, crashed and hurt myself um and then the um, inevitably the one at barber um ended my season so i missed indy and laguna so i missed uh, a total of three rounds this year you know i've got a strange story hunter about ridge i remember when you had that crash exactly when it happened because ironically i had been talking to your mom right before that session when you went out mm -hmm. and i had a long talk with her and tell i was telling her how uh, impressed i am with you as a as a writer and a person and i said we paul and i need to get you on the podcast and we were setting up making <laughs> that happen and, <laughs> the ne and I, I don't need to laugh about it but the next session i'm like oh my god you know because that's when you got crashed and i was like you know right yeah. after that and i was like i, I felt a wrench in those plans what's that <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Threw a wrench in those plans, even though I didn't even know them. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I don't even know if your mom would remember that, but I remember thinking she went from, you know, us having this joyful conversation about your program and what you're doing. And then, all the, you know, that happened. And, you know, speaking of that, how, you know, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit more, but the fact that your mom and dad are so integral to your racing program, how, and are, I think, are you an only child? No. So I do have an older brother. Oh, that's right. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I do have an older brother, um, but he's uh, in the military. So he, That's right. I've always, I'm the youngest, so I've always kind of been around. Um, and now that I'm racing and stuff like that, I, we all live on the same property together. So it's like, we're not, we're closer than most people think we are. Um, we're pretty close. So like we see each other every day. We do stuff every day, kind of like a, just a big family ranch back home. So um it's nice. I'm glad they're a part of it. Um, I couldn't do it without them. So, but yeah, like their dad's my mechanic. Mom's basically the team manager. She handles all the, the, the money stuff side of it and sponsorship. So we kind of, we all do our part. Um, I just, I got to do my part better and not get hurt and just actually stay on the motorcycle. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's like, it's nice. Um, I'm really grateful for having them and, um, having the relationship I have with them because I know some people just uh, don't have the relationship with the parents like I do. Yeah. And you know, what's, what's interesting, Hunter, sorry, Paul, I just want to jump in on this one more thing because this, he led, led us into this. This is fascinating to me about the fact that, you know, it's a, fa it's a family team. Um, but the other part of it is, is Hunter just said that his mom handles the money part of it and his dad's the mechanic. So Hunter, tell the, our fans here on off track with, Crothers and Vice, what your mom does for a living and what your dad does for a living, because this is kind of fascinating. <laughs> so yeah, my mom, uh, she's a financial advisor for uh, Edward Jones. Uh, she has an office in our hometown um, in Georgia. So yeah, she she does uh, 401ks, retirement plans, everything. So she's really good with money. <laughs> she knows all the numbers more than I do. Um, so it's good to have somebody like that. And then my dad, uh, he's a... Um, aircraft mechanic for delta so he works at the airport works on the airplanes wow it's so cool that he's a mechanic and she's the money person and not only for their professions but for your team which is so it's so perfect you know that they can do yeah, that. yeah. <laughs> i know i like especially my dad working for delta so like um i can if i need to be where especially for super camps if I, something's late um i can just jump on a plane and we fly for free. So like I can go anywhere. So it's nice um, 
for that aspect, if I need to get somewhere to go testing or something like that, or need to do something, I can just hop on a plane and get there without having to worry for paying for flights and booking that and stuff like that. Wow. So it's, it's a nice gig. It's a nice gig. I'm really grateful to have that. <laughs> well, I'm, uh, I'm not completely sure I'd use your mom as a financial advisor if she thinks it's a good idea to go motorcycle racing, but we'll talk about that a little bit another time. <laughs> another time. So tell us, I know you, you're, you're, you're pretty much set for this coming season. Tell us a little bit about the team that you're, you, you know, the team going forward this year. What's different? What's the same? And, uh, you know, what you hope to accomplish? Yeah. So, um, pretty much the, our program is going to be the same. Um, we're still going to be riding a 2020 uh, Yamaha R1 in Stock 1000 and Superbike Cup. Um, but a couple things will change. Um, we're joining uh, technical partners with Westby. Um, they're going to actually transport our bike this year. So they're going to help out with transport and then be technical advisors. Um, if we have any problems or questions, stuff like that, um, we'll be um, under under their canopy this year. Um, so it'd be nice to have somebody to kind of bounce ideas off of, um, you know, and they're accomplished Yamaha team and like they know what they're doing. Um, the results speak for themselves with Matthew and the team. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, having that aspect this year, kind of more well-rounded. Um, and then also we have a, a crew chief change. Um, we're um, bringing in uh, Melissa, uh, Cam Peterson, Melissa uh, Paris. Cam Peterson's crew chief from last year. She's going to be joining um, our team as our crew chief. And then Josh, uh, Josh will be, our, uh, be my rider coach for the year. Well, you've got everything pretty much buttoned up. I mean, that's going forward into this season, you have to feel a lot better than you did going forward into last season based on the extra helm. Yeah, no, especially, yeah, especially, yeah, because um, we we got our bike um, last year, the first round, um, and we, uh, with the new 2020 Yamahas, they've changed the little things from the older Yamahas, just like electronic and like mapping and stuff. And we just kind of, couldn't wrap our head around it. We were always on the back foot um, going to each round at nationals, having to go fast. Um, so now that we've actually had some testing this off season and actually, okay, wrapping our head around the mapping part and help getting help from um, Ed Sullivan, Matthew's crew chief at Westby. Um, it, it makes it less, less worrisome and give you a peace of mind. To, okay. All right. Now the bike, I, I can know, I know what the bike's going to do um, and focus on me as a rider rather than worried about the bike and what the bike's going to do and be kind of scared of the thing. Um, so yeah, for sure, for sure going into this year, it's, it's, it's going to be a good year. You know, Hunter, so if I'm understanding this correctly, so Melissa Paris is going to be uh, your crew chief, which mm -hmm. means, your dad, Tony, is a mechanic. Does that mean that Melissa is going to be bossing your dad around? Oh, for sure. 100%. 100%. Oh, yeah. And he's okay with it. He's okay with it. He, he will he'd be like, yes, ma'am, I'll do it. So he's good like that. So he, yeah, it's going to be funny to watch, though. Well, <laughs> depending on how your mom is, he might be used to that already. That's right. Oh, he's for sure used to that. She, she's the... She wears the pants in the house. Let's just put, put it that way. We're all scared of her. We're not scared of him. We're scared of her. Yeah, that's funny. Well, that's how it works. That's the way it is in my family, too. My wife is the boss. And, you know, if mommy ain't happy, ain't nobody happy, as they say. So, exactly. So, you, yeah. run it, you run it hide. You get it out of throwing distance because she'll grab anything and throw it at you. She doesn't, if she doesn't care what it is. I've been, I've been hit with a lot of things and left a lot of marks on me. <laughs> How, how, did she, how did she and your dad, how do they handle the fact that, you know, it's inherent in motorcycle road racing that you're going to have crashes? I mean, how, how do they handle that? It seems like they do, they do a pretty good job with it. Do you, would you say that's true? Yes. Yeah, for sure. My, I'm like, I'm lucky to have my uh, parents that support me and love what I do. Um, my dad actually got me into racing when I was younger. So he's the one that all started all. So you can blame it on him. Um <laughs> But, uh, yeah, mom does it well. She, 
she knows the the risk involved and she's not worried that I'm cra- going to crash or get hurt or something like that. She just knows how much um, she's okay with it. She just knows how much I put work I put into it. And so when, if I crash and get hurt, she's like, feels sad for me. So like she knows crashing's part of it, but she knows this is what I love to do. And she's going to give her 110% for basically me to chase my dreams. Um, she only thinks she says if I crash and I get up and I stick my hand up in the air and give a thumbs up to the camera or anybody because she'll know, then she'll know I'm okay. And that's been since I was four racing all the way up. If I crash and go down, she can see me. If I get up and just put my hand in there, she knows I'm all right. And then she's got the peace of mind. So that's the only, that's her only request. She goes, I don't care. Get up, put your hand in the air, tell me you're okay. And then I'll be okay. Yeah. She only has one rule, just one rule. It's kind of like when you're supposed to call when you get somewhere. Have you ever forgotten? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we have, yeah, for sure. No, it's exactly it. Um, yeah, just kind of letting her know I'm safe and like I'm good. I might be hurt, might have something, but if I'm as, you know, if I know, okay, I'll be okay, I'll give her the thumbs up and she'll be all right. I want to talk to you, Hunter, a little bit about your uh, the, what you do with Josh Hayes because one of the things that's interesting about his J-Force training camp is he's got a lot of different riders and he does – several different aspects of training for those riders. I mean, what he seems to do for Bobby Fong is so different than what he does for Cam Peterson, or he's worked with Kevin Almeida. Um, it, it's with Bobby, he's talked about kind of getting his, you know, head in the right place. And he did that. He's done that with Cam as well, too. And, you know, a lot of these riders, I mean, especially those those guys, you know, they're so experienced that their their technique and racecraft is is pretty solid. Um, what what does he bring to your program? What what does he focus on anything specifically with you? Uh yeah. Um, so yeah, like you said, he he helps um, Bobby just kind of getting his head around it, um, and just not you know freaking out in si- different situations. And he works with me a little bit on that, but we mo- mainly focus on just because I help with super camp a lot. I struggle with just like teaching technique and stuff um, a lot instead of just going, like just going for it, throwing technique out the window and just trying to go fast. So that's what we've been trying to focus on this year is um, just throwing it out the wind, throwing out the window, not worrying about certain, certain things. uh, And just, just trying to go fast, basically just let's just be racy, go for blood and everything and just kind of get that mindset of, um, that person has my spot. I'm going to go take it from him rather than just kind of, okay, he can have that spot. Just kind of be more direct on the, on the motorcycle and go to the front basically. And what, what type of rider would you say you are Hunter in terms of, you know, are you hard on the brakes? Do you use the rear brake? Are you good with corner speed? Are you a point and shoot? I mean, tell, tell us about your, your style of riding. So, Coming off a junior cup bike, this is what kind of I kind of struggled with last year. Um, they carry a lot of corner speed, um, so like I would just kind of roll the corners, and I I'm pretty good at the corner speed aspect. But on a big bike, it's more point and shoot. Um, so I'm having to retrain my 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 thought process of going into corners rather than roll the corner, kind of get it in there hot, turn it, and just like point point and shoot off the corner. Um, but I'm getting better at it. Um, especially this off season, we've just been working on that rather than making it a big, you know, kind of U shape, kind of V and everything off, squaring it up, picking it off the side of the tire as quickly as possible. So um, right now I would say it's kind of in transition of everything, trying to get it to be able to ride the super bike the way you need to ride it to go fast. Um, And just changing my thought process rather than like, okay, that's what I need to do. Stop doing this and just being analytical on the bike. I would say I'm more analytical than just saying, screw it. I'm going to grab a handful of throttle, hope for the best. Uh, like I have to think things through, uh, more than just saying, well, I hope this works. Let me roll the dice. (laughs) So, well, and, and, you know, let's talk about that difference between the junior cup, um, bike and, and your stock 1000 super bike cup bike a little bit, because, you know, obviously there's some electronics invo- involved in both. Uh, certainly the stock 1000 bike, a heck of a lot more than the junior cup bike, not quite the level of a super bike in terms of 
that full suite of electronics. But you know, you have a pretty sophisticated electronic system on your your bike uh, in stock form. So my question to you is, do you trust it? Because that idea about just gas it and hope that you know the traction control is going to do what it's supposed to do that that's a tough thing to learn um is is that difficult for you uh yes uh yeah it's i wouldn't i wouldn't if you ask any rider it's pretty hard to trust something that's yeah. not you you know like that you don't know because sometimes it fails sometimes it doesn't it's just the way computers work um, but yeah that's that's the hardest thing right now is getting it to where okay this right here, if like in this corner, like I know super bikes can get it almost down to the corner. Uh, we just kind of have a broad range across the board um, electronics. That's the kind of difference. Um, but yes, it's hard. It's hard to go. OK, I can get to 100 percent throttle with this much lean angle and the thing's going to intervene and the traction control is going to kick on and not high side me because the things are so powerful. Like stock bikes now are 190, almost 200 horsepower. And coming from a junior cup bike that has 50 horsepower, it's a little bit different. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, just trusting, trusting the bike. Um, that's, that's, that's a hard thing to do. So Hunter, in a couple of weeks here, we have our test at Coda, the preseason test. Are we going to see you there? Yes, for sure. Yep. I will for sure be there. Awesome. Obviously that's a, that's a, that's a pretty important couple of days as far as getting your stuff ready. It's, it's kind of odd in a way that we're, you know, we're testing at a track that we're not racing at. We didn't know we weren't racing at it, but we're, we're apparently right. not racing at it, but it's still <laughs> it's a helpful two days just to get your, just to get your brain up to speed and get that bike set up for road Atlanta. Yeah, for sure. Especially, especially being at a track like that, that's pretty, pretty quick. And it's got a lot of stuff to work on a lot of different corners. So you can, if you can set your bike up for that, I think you'll be pretty much dialed for road Atlanta like through the S is through like three, four, five area um, at Coda and Atlanta, the little, the quick flick S's and then the hard braking and off the back straightaway, stuff like that. I think it's going to be very beneficial for us as a team uh, to kind of give our head around and, okay, figure out setup because road Atlanta and uh, Coda, are, they're different, but they have some same, um, same corners and same straightaways and same ideas around the track. So we can just work on those things. And I think we'll be pretty, pretty dialed for the first race come uh, into, into April. You know, one thing I want to talk to you about too, is we've had some fans that okay, have asked us from time to time when we've mentioned in our social media things about the Superbike cup and, you know, a couple of fans have, have mistaken Superbike cup for another, re, another uh, way to refer to our superbike championship and obviously that's not the case it, you know in the we're going on seven years in moto america at this point and our, some of our classes have evolved a little bit and you know at, at one time as you know um super, we had super stock 1000 that ran on the track at the same time as superbikes and you know uh, you mentioned matthew skoltz and you know he famously won a couple of superbike races on a, on a super stock 1000 bike that spec'd a little different than your stock 1000 bike it years is not quite as advanced as that bike was but right. can you talk about for us for the fans about the fact that you race in stock 1000 and you also race in superbike cup and and what that means and and how you view it, it, it do you like doing it? Is, it is it important for your program yeah for sure so yeah this uh motor america has allowed us to kind of race our stock bikes our bikes that we run in stock 1000 class into the superbike um class on the grid with them so yeah i think it's very beneficial honestly um as stock one th uh 1000 riders to get to ride with somebody faster than you um meaning the bikes are faster the, the electronics stuff like that so it gives you kind of like a, a push to kind of okay let me see what i can do and where they're faster but always people like to ride with faster people um it just brings you to that level it forces you to ride harder and ride, get to that level. So you can, you know, you want to beat them as competitors on the racetrack. You want to beat the guy in front of you. And once you pass that guy, you just look for the next guy. So it, I think it's very beneficial for, especially for stock 1000, we get more time on the racetrack um, to learn and try to get up to the speed. And then also if we do good uh, super bike races on a stock bike, it shows how, what caliber rider we are. Um, and, potentially get a ride in the future so 
with yeah, full I mean, Super Bowl team. It's a great stepping stone for sure. I mean, you know, we, we haven't heard yet what Cam Peterson's plans are for this year, but, you know, it's certainly, I mean, he won – the championship and that cup and you know a lot of I mean he was in the top five in some of those super bike races and a lot of the fans were like saying this this guy deserves to be in the in the you know on the big bike the super bike so I can see how that and it's great for your arc of your your plan of wanting to get into super bike it sounds like you know you're you're only like maybe a half a step away from making that happen you know maybe next year or the year after that is that is that really kind of your goal yeah for sure yeah that's that's my goal for sure is to be uh, racing with the fastest guys in America for sure and being up there and being up front and you know running with them to show how how good of a caliber rider I am um, but like the next steps I just got to chip away at the steps I got to work on certain things and hopefully the, res the results are going to come this year and then next year and then hopefully have the opportunity in two three years time to actually get my chance at riding one of those super bikes. When you go into this season, uh, obviously your 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 last your season last year on Stock One Thousand had some good moments and had some bad moments. Do you mm -hmm. is it a baby steps thing for you? Are you thinking like, okay, let's get this thing rolling and top five is the goal and then podium is the goal? I mean, is that how you approach it? Uh, kind of. Um, it all it's all up in the wind right now, you know, because like last year we just ended on a crash, so like our potential is there. We just got to go out and like come around the first code of test. We'll see where we are. But once, once I get that little taste of uh, close to a podium or that, I'm going to, I'm going to do whatever it takes regardless, but that confidence, just confidence building when you know you can be there and run with those guys and not lose them, then your confidence just builds. And it basically the curve of the expectation just goes straight to the top. So you want, everybody wants, wants to win races but you got to kind of be uh realistic um at the same time but yeah for sure for sure right now top fives um um is the goal um last year we were in that second group right behind the first group so i want to be for sure in that front group this year and then especially if i get a top five and i'm close to the podium i'm gonna go for it um i had a couple races like in junior cup when i was battling for the podium and i'm like I want to win and I crashed out of both races going for it. So I'm not here to take second. Um, granted, I like podiums and stuff like that, but the main goal for everybody is to win races. And that's, that's the goal every year coming in is I want to win as many races as possible. All right. Well, that's a good spot for us to end on Hunter. We appreciate you joining us and, I don't want Danny Walker to dock your pay and only give you 50 cents today. So <laughs> Exactly. He's been driving around. I'm actually here. He's been driving around on the tractor just looking at me. He pulls up beside me. Like, I can actually <laughs> see. I can see the Danny scowl as he looks at you, like, get out here and water something. But um, yeah. we, we appreciate you. We appreciate you taking some time to, uh, to join us this morning. And obviously, we'll see you in a few weeks at the CODA test. Uh, stay safe out there training and uh, yeah, we'll see you in Texas. And I know Sean's probably got a commercial for us here at the end. Oh yeah. Okay. You know, we, yeah. Uh, thanks guys. Yeah. Thanks Hunter for being on. You did a great job with us. We enjoyed talking to you. So let me just mention, we talked about the test coming up um, at the end of the month here. So it's March 29th and 30th. It's on a Tuesday and a Wednesday. And I mention it because not because we, we have coverage on TV because we don't, unfortunately, we're not doing streaming or any of our TV, but we do have live timing and scoring and our, we are very active on our social media as you guys probably under know. So we, we will put out every session um, after it happens. So you guys, guys can find out um, how these riders are doing. And also, you know, we've only got a couple weeks to go before that test anyway. So a lot of you are probably wondering, there's certain teams out there and certain riders that you don't know what they're doing and where they're going. Well, we're, we're as excited as you and hopeful to get that news out too. So when we can, when we're allowed to get it out there, we're going to get it out and you guys absolutely pay attention to our social media and you'll find out some um, scoops on what's coming up this year. And then, and then please pay attention to our test and then go on our website, look at the, the um, rounds that we have this year and you can click on tickets and get your tickets all set to go for the season. And it's, you know, it's going to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest season we've had so far, um, especially in Superbike and Stock 1000 with um, some changes there and, and a pretty level playing field. 
Uh, so uh, thank, thanks a lot to everybody, and uh, thanks, Paul. You got me all fired up now. Good, I love it. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Hunter's ready to go. We're ready I to buy tickets to go. You know what's funny? It, we get spoiled by live streaming and live TV and all that stuff, but it's kind of it, like I just spent a couple of days watching live timing from the, the test in Portugal that uh, – Cameron Bobier and, and Joe Roberts were taking part in for the Moto2 series. And it's actually kind of fun to watch live timing. You, you kind of know what's going on, but you don't really know what's going on. So you're trying to figure it out, but it kind of, it, it's kind of a fun experience. So I think it's a good, it's a good option for people uh, to, to follow our code of test. I mean, the stopwatch doesn't lie, they say. So you can yeah. always tell, uh, it gives you a pretty good indication of, of how things are going to go when we get the season started. So it's, it's definitely worth checking into. So thanks for that, Sean. Thanks, Hunter. Stay safe. Yep. Uh, guys, thanks, guys. We'll talk to you again soon. Yep. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me on. Y'all have a great day.